What is up guys? Welcome back. Today we are here for our transactions for the GPC after week three. If you guys don't know, uh, every three weeks we have a transaction period where we can make changes to our team uh, and add up to three new Pokemon uh, to the team, of course, uh, while holding on to the 100 total point value. Uh, so we can't ignore that. But this week, um, we made some very interesting transactions. So we're going to go over them, and I want to let you guys uh, know. I want to keep you updated on my team and what's going on with it. So uh, let's get into the very first transaction. Now, the first Pokemon that we dropped was Empoleon. Uh, Empoleon, I, I cave, okay, guys? I cave. It's It sucks, <laughs> okay? It's, it's not good at all. Uh, it's it, it gets worn down too easily, and then it can't accomplish its roles. That's its biggest problem. Uh, also, on top of that, it's really slow. So, uh, it went 0-3. Um, well, I won two games and, won and lost one, but Empoleon itself got no kills and died three times. So, even though I won two games, Empoleon still found a way to die. That, like, that's literally all it does. It just dies. Uh, while rocks helped in the first game, I will admit, uh, they kept up a lot of pressure on Josh's team. Uh, other than that, Empoleon didn't put in too much work. I tried a gimmick set in week two. Uh, didn't end up working because my opponent was able to play around it and saw straight through it. And in week three, uh, my Empoleon, I had to change at the last second because I, I didn't even remember that you can run Defiant uh, with Defog. So, um, so a few things uh, that Empoleon is not very good at, and that is um, tricking people because uh, <laughs> that didn't work. Uh, it's not very good at survivability, and it's a very good rock setter. I'll, I'll give it that. It's a decent Scald Spammer because it has pretty high uh, special attack. But its speed cripples it in all of those rolls. Because it's not bulky enough to take hits that other water types can, as Rufus has said before. Um, there's a lot of factors. Anyway, I won't go too far into Empoleon. But I dropped Empoleon. Empoleon is worth 8 points. But I needed a Stealth Rocker. I definitely needed another Stealth Rocker other than Jirachi. Because I do not want to put it into that roll every week. I was always having this, this issue where if I wanted to run Rachi offensively, I had to bring Empoleon. Even if it didn't have a good matchup, I would just bring it as a rock setter, and I don't like doing that. I like Pokemon that can uh, excel in a stealth rocking role as well as other roles. So what I decided to pick up in place of Empoleon was Aerodactyl. So Aerodactyl is also a defogger. It's a good stealth rock setter. It's extremely fast, guys. This 130 base speed is incredible because I can adjust it every single week, make it as fast as I need it to. If I need to make it defensive, I will, even though it does not have the best defenses at all. It's pretty frail, I would say. It's it's kind of the opposite of Empoleon. It's fast, but frail. Uh, Empoleon is slow, but bulky, as you can see. Uh, but this 105 attack is actually very usable, especially if you run an adamant nature. Uh, brings it up to three, uh, 339, I believe, if I give it this 31 IVs. Uh, yeah, 339, which is very nice. Uh, gets Rock Head plus uh, not Head Smash, so that's unfortunate. Uh, it doesn't get any real good moves to use with Rock Head, but a Nerve is a good ability as a lead option. Aerodactyl uh, likes to uh, be able to keep Pokemon from eating their berries. Uh, its dual stabs are very nice, Rock and Flying. Uh, I would have Thunder Asterion, but Thunder Asterion doesn't get really good Flying Stab on the special side, which is its biggest asset is its special attack. So having a uh, flying stab, even if it's only wing attack, uh, it's still better than not having uh, reliable flying stab or flying stab that you'd rather be running other coverage instead of uh, on a mon. So wing attack is always nice to have. It also has the uh, the option to fly if ever needed. It has some fangs. Uh, it's got ice fang. It's got uh, I think it's got fire fang as well. But it also gets flamethrower and fire blast on the special side. Not the best special attack, but for quad resists that are really weak on the special side, it can use that. Uh, Earthquake is nice. Edgequake is amazing to have, guys. Uh, it's just something that my team was lacking, other than Zygarde, I would say. Uh, but Zygarde doesn't typically want to be running rock type moves. Having f a fast rock type coverage is really. Or rock, rock type. Rock, I can't speak. Rock type stab uh, is very, very nice on a team. Uh, gets set up with agility, hone claws, gets nice coverage like uh, Aqua Tail, Crunch. We mentioned some of the fangs. It gets Pursuit, so it can be a fast Pursuit Trapper. I don't need to lock Absol into that role anymore uh, if I don't need to. Gets Iron Head for Fairies. It's just a solid mon overall, honestly. It's fast Tailwind. It's got fast Taunt. Uh, just fast, 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 fast stuff. Uh, and that's what Aerodactyl is really good at. However, it's pretty frail. But at this point, dropping Empoleon, I realized my bulk actually originates from the top half of my team. My Jirachi, Zygarde, Florges core. Uh, my Fairy Dragon Steel core is really, really bulky and it can function really well as a defensive core. I don't necessarily need a Fire, Water, Grass core to be defensive. So why don't I just get something that's offensive? 
So the next transaction that I made, by the way, I did pick up three new mons, guys, this, uh, this transaction period. The next mon I decided to drop was Masquerine. Why? Because I never brought it to a game. And if you guys know my team uh, before this week, then you know what other mon that I didn't bring to any game, and we're also dropping that one, but we'll get to that in a second. Now, Masquerine, it's kind of cool. It's got fun, gimmicky stuff, like this base 80 speed with base 100 special attack with Quiver Dance is not bad. Intimidate is okay, but the problem is, Masquerine comes in on rocks and takes a million. It takes half its health, and it can't afford to take half its health. If I want to, if I want to put it into a defogging roll, I can't. So uh, I got rid of my flying type, but I picked up another one. So that kind of makes up for it. Uh, and so, so now I have Aerodactyl. I don't necessarily need this flying type again. I also have a fast defogger uh, to take uh, Masquerade's roll with Aerodactyl. So I don't need this mon. I don't feel like I need it at all. It also gets webs, but I was never running webs anyway. So that wasn't going to be a thing. So. Instead of Masquerade, I decided to increase my offense. This is what I'm gearing toward. I lost a water type, and my only means of hazard removal at the moment is Aerodactyl, and I didn't want to keep it that way. So I definitely needed another hazard remover, and I lost a bit of priority with Empoleon, but base 86 attack is not going to cut it for me if I want this thing to be an Aqua Jet Mon. Uh, it's not going to do enough damage, so I, need so I needed something stronger in that sense. Uh, in terms of priority, because right now my priority just got cut down to uh, Lopany and um, my other Mon being Zygarde with E-Speed. So I absolutely needed something else with priority, and the Pokemon that we decided to get was also a Rapid Spinner in Kabutops. Kabutops is really cool, uh, not only because it's a lot faster than Empoleon was, so it's, it can run its offensive uh, sets a lot better. Uh, it hits 284 speed, so this is really nice. Uh, it also gets Swords Dance to increase its attack, just like Empoleon, but obviously with this attack stat, it's a lot better. You have base 115 here. This is really, really good. Uh, this is even better than Aerodactyls. This goes up to 361 on Adamant, so that's really strong. But what really captured my attention with Kabutops wasn't the Rapid Spin, which obviously gets it. wasn't the priority with Aqua Jet. It was something that I talked to Envy about uh, in his draft for the GBA. We were talking about his last couple of picks, and... Uh, he wanted to get uh, Amistar, which he ended up getting, and I told him, dude, yeah, go for it. It works well with your rain, and weak armor got a boost in Gen 7, and it did. Weak armor, if you guys don't know, if you get hit by a physical attack, before your defense would go down and your speed would go up by one. Now your defense goes down by one and your speed gets raised by two. So this means that I can... It essentially set up a swords dance and an agility at the same time. I can double dance on the same turn as long as my opponent is hitting me with a physical attack. So that's really, really nice. Uh, and you guys might see that come into effect. We're having a, uh, I didn't, I didn't mention this, but we're having a break week match uh, tomorrow because this is our break week. Uh, we're not having any official matches for the GPC this season, but a lot of us decided to take on members of the opposing conference. I'm in the Grand Conference, which is the top level, and then we have the bottom level, which is the newer entrance and the uh, the players that didn't perform as well last season in the Petite Conference. And this week, everybody, uh, or a lot of the coaches, decided to play somebody in the opposite conference, just in case they didn't get a chance to play against them later on in the season, being playoffs, of course. So uh, I decided to take on Drew. You guys are going to see that match tomorrow, and you're going to see what I mean about weak armor being an amazing ability. Uh, Swift Swim is also a possibility. Now, before I, uh, before in the past, I've drafted uh, Mons like Armaldo, which uh, never again, but uh, also had the ability Swift Swim. And if you're able to set up rain with this, uh, it's very, very nice. And I actually have a couple of really good rain setters. Uh, Thunder Ethereum being one of them, it's able to support itself by setting up rain and then spamming Thunder. And then um, I believe Florgis as well gets Rain Dance. So I have a decent rain setting core. While it might not be your traditional rain setters like Lipard and uh, those kinds of things like Priority Prankster, uh, Rain Dance, I think regular Thunderous as well, Thunderous Incarnate. Uh, and just like Politoed Pelipper with their abilities, I can still set up rain. And setting up rain for Kabutops is scary because this thing hits super hard with a life orb and it has priority. So as soon as the rain goes down, it's still hitting you with its priority and it doesn't even matter. You can't do anything about it. Some of this thing's best sets are uh, Focus Sash because it can come in uh, without hazards up and just start sweeping through a team if they have no form of priority or if yours is faster than theirs uh, and you're able to knock out their entire team. 
Uh, another set would be like a Lumberry, for example, if they want to burn you with Will-O-Wisp, you set up a Swords Dance in their face, and that's the end of that. Uh, obviously, having a quad weakness to Grass is not the best thing. Uh, however, my only other quad weakness on the team right now is Ice uh, with Zygarde, so I think I can handle it. Uh, it's difficult for Mons to run HP Ice and HP Grass because they can't, so uh, I think that creates a nice offensive core with Zygarde uh, with the priority core, and Megalopony is going to be nicely supported. Kabutops can take down some of the things that uh, Megalopony might not otherwise like dealing with, like Flame Body Mons, for example, if we remember in Week 1. Uh, so, Kabutops is really cool. Uh, also getting Rapid Spin, and of course, Stealth Rocks. Guys, I now have three Stealth Rock setters. I do not need to lock Jirachi into a Stealth Rocking role, or hesitate, or bring him on specifically to st set up Stealth Rocks, because I have other Pokemon that can do it now. I have Aerodactyl, and I have Kabutops. So this is perfect. Uh, I love this Mon. I'm really looking forward to using it, and I think it works really well on this team. Now, moving on into the last transaction that we made. We had Flareon, guys. We had this thing. And I was going to bring it week one, and then because of the first mock battle that I had, I ended up not bringing it because Jose brought a Scarfed, um, a Scarfed Cobalion against me, and I wasn't able to outspeed it even after a Flame Charge, otherwise I would have just swept through. But, uh, otherwise, this thing had some viability. It had, uh, it gets Quick Attack, so it has a, form, a form of priority, I guess you could say. Uh, it had Flare Blitz, uh, with Guts, which is cool, it was a Wish Passer. But honestly, I was finding that Jirachi and Florges were enough of a wish passing core. Uh, and also, guys, I took a look at my matchups for the next three weeks because I won't be able to make another transaction until three weeks from now. Or four, technically, because we're still on break week. Uh, but after week six of the GPC of this season is when I'm, I'm going to be able to make my next transaction. So I looked at my three next matchups and I found Mons that worked well in those matchups. I didn't just pick up any old mons just because I felt like it, I had some logic behind it and I, I looked at these mons matchups and I felt like they were actually really good. So Aerodactyl, Kabutops, looked at Flareon, this thing wasn't going to do anything for the next three weeks. It's a two point mon that I picked up because I wanted a fire type but I didn't even need one. I did not need a fire type guys. Having one would have been nice because it prevents my, opponent, uh, my opponents from fire spamming me but I just picked up two rock types. I'm not worried about fire types anymore, at least most. Uh, fire and fighting types could be a little bit of an issue. Every other fire type, I can handle. So, I don't need Flareon anymore. I do not need this Flash Fire ability. Not with these garbage stats. I'm sorry, this thing cannot take a hit on the physical side. 65 and 60 with the power creep now. Can't do it. It's speed, subpar. If you've noticed, I've increased the speed of my team tremendously. Empoleon into Aerodactyl and Masquerine into Kabutops. While Masquerine and Kabutops are the same speed, you could argue that Masquerine became Aerodactyl and then Empoleon became Kabutop. So I have increased my speed quite a bit. And my last transaction is not necessarily increasing my speed, but I looked at all the remaining three point mons because this is how many points I had left. Empoleon was worth eight, dropped it for Aerodactyl, which is worth six. Then I dropped Masquerine, which is three, for Kabutops, which is worth four. And if you work out the math, I now have three points left. Flareon is worth two. As soon as I drop it, I have three points left. So, I looked at the three-point mons. There were a few that stood out to me, and I, I considered Floatzel. Uh, I considered Quagsire, which was a four-point mon, but at this point I couldn't do it anymore because I wanted a secondary ground type if possible, and maybe two water types would be nice. But, ultimately, again, I looked at my matchups, and I saw what my biggest problem was. And my the biggest problem against my team is setup. If I get set up on... I'm done, <laughs> and I have no way to recover from it, and it's really bad, and I'm glad that nobody's tried to set up on me yet, except for Zazo, uh, but he only got one kill with that, uh, no, he got two kills with that Landorus because his uh, his Lando lived on one from my Ice Punch, but um, as you can see, I had no way of dealing with his setup Lando, so that is a very, very, very big issue for me, and I need a way to deal with that, so the one Mon that stood out the most was Ditto, so now I get to use Ditto. I don't have nicknames for any of these mons, by the way, guys. Aerodactyl, Kabutops, and Ditto all need nicknames. If you guys want to leave suggestions in the comments section down below, please do so. It'd be very heavily appreciated. But uh, Ditto is going to help me a lot. Uh, it's going to kind of d do what Gorgias does in identifying Pokemon sets, but even better. Uh, Gorgias can identify items, and Ditto can identify sets. So if I'm able to look at a Pokemon set, and I see a very odd move, and then I can also see its item, I could be like, oh, okay, that's why it makes sense. That's why they're doing that. So, 
Imposter, great ability. Glad this thing got it. I think it was Gen 5 uh, that it got this as a hidden ability, but now very viable. It can turn into anything on the opposing side. Uh, so if anything tries to set up on me, just slap a choice scarf on Ditto, and it's immediately outspeeding it. Things like, such as Charizard X, for example, which Ethan picked up in uh, in the transactions. I'm sure he'll be watching this. If he wants to know, I'll probably be bringing Ditto against him. I don't care. It's probably coming. Like, he has to prep for it. He has to know it's coming, and he probably won't bring a set up Zard as a result. But I can't risk that. I have to make sure that I can check his Zard somehow uh, from setting up. So, Ditto is probably the best way to do that. It deals with most setup sweepers. A lot of setup sweepers typically have a, a tendency of running coverage that they are also weak to. Uh, for example, Zard, of course, it's going to be running uh, Dragon Claw, but it could also be running Earthquake. I could pull off an Earthquake sweep, for example. Things like that. So, Ditto's really cool in that regard. It doesn't necessarily have to run a Choice Scarf either, by the way, guys. I ran against Johnny in one of his mock battles for a, a game that he had earlier this season in the GPC. I think it was against Jedi. Uh, Jedi had a Ditto, and uh, Johnny had a Zard X, but I brought Ditto with a Haban Berry, and I was able to calc that if I would come in on Zard and be equal speed to it, if it wasn't set up yet, uh, that I would be able to... Was it against Johnny? No, against Johnny, I think I brought a, um, a Koba Berry uh, for his uh, for his Sceptile. But anyway, uh, the point is I can run a Berry to avoid being knocked out by my opponent's super effective coverage against me if I run the, the proper amount of EVs and then revenge them back. And then I'm still sitting with their setup sweeper, their own setup sweeper in their face. So, this is really cool things you can do with Ditto. Really happy to have it, and I'm curious to see how it's going to work out uh, this season. It's a great anti-lead option because it is, it's able to identify sets, just like Gorgeist. Uh, it's really, really solid. I, I love it, uh, and I can't wait to start using it. But anyway, guys, that's going to be it for this transaction period. Make sure to check out the battle tomorrow. It's a really interesting one. I'm going to record it right after this. Uh, and it's uh, it's really fun, so ch so check that out. Uh, also, make sure to check out all of the GPC coaches, all of uh, the well, the GPC Twitter, as well as the GPC channel in the description down below. Make sure to subscribe, like this video if you did enjoy, if you want to keep up to date with my team, and I will catch you guys later. Ciao.